Each sawmill business is similar in what they do, but different in terms of size, configuration, production output, and efficiency. Every mill has its own locale, species and log size mix, personality, and quality. A significant average-sized modern hardwood sawmill today might employ 15 to 25 people and produce 5 to 8 million feet of lumber per year. Most are small, family-run businesses. The supply of logs is one of the mill's biggest challenges. Competition, weather, and shifting market conditions all play a steady role. Mills may need to reach out 150 to 200 miles or more for their logs. It takes both good cash flow and a strong inventory to keep a mill running efficiently year-round. Mills often employ their own timber buyers who work full-time, knocking on doors or going to bid sales. They also buy from producers, who buy timber and often have their own logging crews, who produce logs that are sold to regular customers. Every day, log trucks roll into the yard to be unloaded, sorted and measured, and inventoried. There are various grades and species of logs, all with different values, markets, and customers. Important decisions are made about quality and grade as soon as the logs arrive. Veneer is the highest grade and sold to veneer buyers who visit the mill regularly. There are several grades of saw logs that are cut at the mill into lumber. The lowest grade logs are sold to pallet manufacturers and are not cut at the grade mill. To determine value, the log yard manager will note the species, measure the diameter of each log, look for defects, straightness, and heart content as he inputs it into the inventory system. Logs are then placed in their respective areas on the yard by species or quality. The mill manager keeps a careful eye on the age and condition of his log inventory and makes cutting decisions accordingly. In hot weather, mills try to keep lower inventories as logs degrade quickly. Fall and winter act as a refrigerator for inventories so logs can accumulate and sit for longer periods. Some species, such as maple and hickory, stain and degrade quickly in hot weather and need to be processed immediately. Others, like red oak and cherry, are more resilient and can remain on the log yard longer. The loader operator has a big job and is constantly on the move. His number one focus is to keep the infeed to the debarker full and to maintain flow into the mill. The debarking station is the first step in the manufacturing process. Bark is removed from the log as it contains dirt and grit. Once debarked, logs pass through a metal detector. Logs with metal are pulled and metal is removed so it won't dull or damage the saw blades in the mill. Bark that is removed is ground and sold for landscaping material. There are many saw blades that need to be maintained throughout the mill. One of the most important departments at the mill is the saw filing department. Here the saw filer maintains all the saws for the mill which is critical for mill performance, yield, and the appearance of the final product. There is an art and science to this particular job at the mill, and it takes an experienced filer to keep a mill running efficiently. Logs are then conveyed to the head saw deck where they are placed on the carriage. Once in place, technology is used to scan the log for its size and shape. Linear positioners adjust the log precisely on the carriage for the head sawyer, who then begins to open the log by taking boards from all four sides down to a manageable size for the resaw. Slab cuts and jacket boards are removed from the outside of the log to create a square, four-faced cant. Slab cuts are sent to the chipper as they have no lumber value. Jacket boards are the first grade boards and will be sent to the edger as they usually contain a lot of wane. Wane is bark or lack of wood. Once complete, the squared log or cant is conveyed to the resaw and another log is quickly reset on the carriage. Any waste material is conveyed to a grinder, where it is made into various products, such as chips for energy plants or core material for fiberboard. Nothing is wasted at the sawmill. Mills that have line bar resaws benefit in a number of ways. First, the head sawyer, rather than cutting the log all the way through to the final board, is now only responsible for opening the log and quickly passing it along, thus increasing the number of logs processed per day dramatically. Secondly, the saw kerf, or blade thickness, at the line bar is less than at the head saw, which allows for more boards to be produced from the same log. 
And finally, more grade recovery is possible from a log at the resaw, because sawyers at the resaw have more time to make decisions on which face of the log to choose. Mill yields and returns have increased dramatically over the years as resaws have been installed throughout the industry. They continue to go around and pass through the resaw until they are either made into the last board or sized for a railroad tie or pallet cant. At this station, the operator, who is an experienced grader, selects the best face of the log and the log passes through the saw accordingly. The next machine in the manufacturing process is the edger. At the edger, the edger operator, or edger man, makes important decisions as to how much wane is removed or left on the board in order to maximize mill yield. Modern mills are equipped with optimizing edgers that can be preset to do much of the decision making for the operator. The next machine in the process is the double end trimmer. While positioning each board before it enters the trimmer, the operator inspects each end and has the option to allow the board to be cut full length or to remove one or two feet from either end to improve the appearance or grade. Lumber is normally trimmed two inches over the nominal length as an industry standard. Boards now pass to the all-important grading station, where the grader, or lumber inspector, inputs the board footage, thickness, grade, and final trimming decisions. It's the grader's job to make sure the mill's production meets NHLA standards, as well as customer specifications. Maintaining grade within the rules while at the same time maximizing mill profits makes the inspector's job one of the most critical in the mill. If the grader sees any issues relating to consistency of thickness, sharpness of blades, or anything else that seems to be falling off the mark of good quality, he will quickly communicate it to the mill manager for adjustment. He represents the last official quality control check before lumber gets to the customer. From here, boards pass to the green chain, where lumber handlers will look for the grade mark and sort the lumber into its proper cart by thickness, grade, and length. The green chain is known to be hard work and a place where new workers begin their careers at the sawmill. Experienced handlers who are able to detect quality issues play an important role in the manufacturing process. Full packages are double banded, labeled according to species, grade, and thickness, and sent to the shipping area, where they are loaded onto trucks and ultimately sent to the customer. There are a lot of moving parts to any sawmill. The maintenance department plays a strong, quiet role in not only keeping production running, but in manufacturing a high-quality product. Making high-quality lumber is a precision business. Keeping equipment in top shape, utilizing modern equipment and technology, and having a focused, well-trained team can set a mill apart from its competition.